Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be an updated review on all of the new things from Essence and Catrice that they released in their fall winter collection for 2024. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video is going to be the update that everybody's been work, wait, waiting for. I always buy the new things from the Essence and Catrice lines whenever they drop every six months. And we got those at the end of August and I did first impression videos with them, but those were just first impressions. And of course, I wouldn't be a good makeup reviewer if I didn't come back and give you the full lowdown how I feel about these products. So that's what I have for you today. In case you're new here and you've never seen one of my videos, then hi, my name is Micah. Glad to have you here. I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone. I live in the Netherlands and all of this greatly influences what I can show on my channel and how I like to go about things. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade. I love trying Essence and Catrice, duh. Um, I love eyeshadow palettes and I love getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, maybe you would like to stick around who knows? You don't have to, but I would love to have you join my little family on here. So yes, Essence and Catrice, the review update. So I'm gonna go over all of the different products that I already showed you in those first two videos, and I'm going to give you the full lowdown. I will be doing this according to how I go through my makeup look. So we're gonna start with base, uh, cheeks, eyes, and then we're gonna talk about lips. So I will make sure to have timestamps for those things in this video so that you don't have to watch the entire thing if you don't want to. I have a lot of content with these products already. So I will not be showing swatches in this video because my first impression videos already had all of the swatches in. And I think 90% of what I have to show you here today has already been reviewed over on the blog, where you can see how it sits on my lids, how it sits on the cheeks, how it sits on the face, how it blends out. You can see, get the full load on. So there are going to be tons of links in the description box down below where you can find all of that content. So if you truly wanna see whether what I'm saying in this video is also going with what it looks like, you can go there. I will also make sure to include some affiliate links so that if you wanna shop these and you, uh, have st you struggle to find them, that you might be able to find them in your territory. However, I have very limited access to Essence and Catrice outside of the EU. So I'll try my best to find like a link for all of these products so that you can figure out where to shop it yourself. But official Essence and Catrice websites are usually really good for your territory to figure out what's available to you. So please don't ask me if I know whether any of this is going to be available in your country. I don't have any insider information. It's not me trying to not be helpful. I really don't know. These are just the things that I was able to buy from European retailers. I have no clue when things come to the US or other places abroad. I ask the brands on Instagram, they can usually tell you. I'm very sorry, I cannot be any more helpful than that. First things first, an Essence product from their skincare range. This is the Hello Good Stuff By Face Oil Serum. And I did use this in my first impression video just to see, like get the first sort of idea for it. But I haven't been able to roll this into my skincare routine yet because I'm still using up some other products. And this I think is gonna be like something I'm gonna put in my morning routine. It does have a pretty strong scent though, which is why I don't love these. And to be quite fair, I've tried quite a bit of the Essence and Catrice skincare bits by now. And so far, I'm not too impressed. I am in my late thirties. I think that if you're in your teens or in your twenties and your skin doesn't have a lot of needs just yet, that these can be really good, simple, uh, makeup products, but for me, this it just it, I need a little bit more from this. So as affordable as this is, it doesn't really have a lot of use for me. However, I do like trying these things from sometimes, and they do discontinue some things quite quickly though. So that's something that you also need to bear in mind. Primer, um, I've got two here from Catrice: the Catrice Endless Pearls Primer and the Vitamin C Fresh Glow Primer. Uh, this one I haven't even put in my makeup collection because I. I use it once or twice and I just wasn't really impressed. I'm not gonna give this a dedicated review. Um, I have tried one of these primers in the past from Catrice and that's why. 
I bought the Disney Villains one and I feel that this one is exactly the same as the one that I was trying then. It just has a different label. I feel the bottle of this is even the same. It just has a different sticker. Um, so yeah, this is very similar to something I already used up in the past. So I don't feel I necessarily need to keep this around because it, I used one of these up last year. So that's why that one hasn't really gotten much of love yet. Um, this is about to get a lot of love because I'm currently trying to use up the primer I'm using so I can give this more of a whirl. Um, I'm always trying to like use up a primer and then go moving into the next thing. And the vitamin C fresh glow primer, it's, it's okay. I've used it once or twice again, just for the review, just to see whether I liked it and I like it enough. However, with the Catrice and Essence primers, like I've gone th again, like with the skincare, I've gone through so many of these things where I kind of feel like Again, it's okay, it works. However, they discontinue these really, really quickly. And I feel that whenever I found something that I really, really like, they end up doing away with it. So that's why I, I'm, I've sort of stopped prioritizing these in my reviews because I know that it, I struggle using these within the six month period and then they get, away, get rid of them anyway. So it's a lot of effort. Um, for very little payback, you could say, because it's not the products that last in their collections. So I do want to try this a little bit more. This is going to get a dedicated review once my Milk Makeup Primer is gone. So that's rev that review is still pending um, because I do did like this enough. It does have a very strong, like, citrusy scent. Catrice launched a new powder. This is the Soft Glam Filter Powder, and it has this, like, color correcting thing going on. It's like peachy with a little bit of green and a little bit of purple and um, very reminiscent of like something Garland does uh, those kind of things um this is really pretty i actually used up my kiko powder in uh, october and then uh, the only powder i had in my shop my stash was this and this works really well it's more of a finishing powder i feel rather than as like a a setting powder i'm not sure whether it says here creates a radiant finish and soft focus effect. So it's definitely not meant to be a setting powder, which is probably why it works for me. I've got quite dry skin. Um, so I did really enjoy this. I know I will pop this in a shop my stash in the future to try and use it up. And then Essence had some like correcting concealery kind of things that were new. We have the Bright Eyes Under Eye Stick. And this also has a dedicated review up on the blog. This, this is okay. Like, it works. The shade is fine for me. It only comes in the one shade, I believe. But there's one big issue. It's far too dry for my under eye area. Again, something that works if you're in your late teens and early 20s, that is the market that Essence is aimed for. That's why they exist. So this is just not quite right for me. However, it does work. It does brighten up your under eye. I prefer the Catrice one because it has a little bit more dewiness. And then we have the Color uh, Conceal Like a Pro Color Correcting Palette, also by Essence. And I used this in my first impression and this was all right. I just feel that the pigmentation of some of these bombs that are in here aren't quite right for me. So the only one that really blends away into my skin is the yellow. And the other ones, even if I put something over it, are still noticeable. The green one looks like a green patch. The orange is far too dark for me. The lavender makes everything look very, very blue. Um, not a great, not, just not great. So, um, I do like a little bit of color correcting, but really the only place where I ever do it is on the under eye. And I like a peachy tone for that because I have quite a lot of blue tones right there. And the best thing to use for it is to cancel it out with the peach. But like I mentioned, this peach is too dark for me to make that work. I need something lighter with a little bit more pink. And then we're moving on to like foundation like products. And I have one that isn't officially foundation, but that's how I've been using it. But I do also need to mention this monstrosity of a, of a product. Uh, however, that's my mistake, not the brand's mistake. The Essence I Heart Flawless Skin Foundation. And I bought this going like, great, Essence has a new foundation. I'm gonna try it, let's find out. So I used this in my first impression and then I saw 
matte and full coverage. If there are two things I don't like in a foundation, it's if they're matte and full coverage. This does not go with my skin type. It just doesn't. And I could have known if I had looked into this product a little bit more closely than going like, oh, the new Essence products are here. Let me buy everything. Because I do try to pick and choose from what's new, what I'm interested in. Like I don't buy everything they do, um, but I try to like buy most. Um, so yeah, this is okay, I think. Like as far as a matte full coverage foundation goes, this isn't really too offensive. The shade I have this in is Light Porcelain, which is 10, which was light enough for me. It actually worked, but the texture of this, you guys, I really, really didn't like it. Texture-wise, this felt like clay and it settled down super quickly. So the way I like to apply foundation is that I put some on the back of my hand, pick it up with my finger and I spread it out with a finger put it all over my face and then I blend it out with a brush. You don't have time for that with this. It settles down so quickly that I have to go cheek, brush, forehead, brush. But I found that that made it very difficult to make everything look seamless because I couldn't correct if I like had missed a patch or <sighs> it, it just didn't feel great. It looked okay for how like matte and heavy coverage this is. I felt it still looked okay. This is a very heavy duty foundation for sure. I cannot fault it for that, but I really didn't enjoy the texture of it. I could just like feel it drying on my skin. It felt mostly like, you know, those drying clay masks. That's what this felt like going on and I did not like that sensation at all. So I'm sorry. Maybe if you enjoy matte foundations, maybe if you like full coverage, maybe if you have oily skin, you need this, but I personally don't. And then finally in base, I've saved the best for last, the Soft Glam Filter Fluid. This is the product I know everybody wants to know more about. This is in 010 Fair Light. Um, I filmed a short with this to compare it to what this is trying to do, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I like this one better than the e.l.f., the e.l.f. Halo Glow. This is shade-wise a perfect dupe for the shade 2 in the Charlotte. Um, Texture-wise, it's the same. However, I can do something with this that I can't do with the Charlotte. I can wear this as foundation on a good skin day. On a good skin day, just a little bit of concealer, this all over the face, and it's beautiful, beautiful. However, you can use this as highlighter, you can use this as a primer, you can use it under makeup, you can use it over makeup. This is such a versatile little product. They actually recommend you buy like a few shades of this, so you can even use it to like sculpt your face with it if you get one of the deeper tones. So this does come in a bunch of shades if you go online, if you're in the EU. However, I have not seen any of the other shades being in stock so far. There are three shades that I have seen in stock everywhere and all the other shades that either they don't exist or they haven't produced them yet or there's something else going on. I don't know. In store, the availability is very limited. So you have to go online to see if you can find your shade, which is the only downside I feel with Essence and Catrice very often is that even if they do different shades, they don't stock them in physical stores. So you can't go out and swatch it and see what's right which is a bit of a shame, but yeah, this is a really lovely product. I rate this very, very highly. This is such a winner from the brand. And I think that this is like one of the reasons why it's, why it's so difficult to get your hands on is because everybody is buying these up because it's that amazing. It's just really, really good. And I have just been loving this thing to pieces. I, the, very, very big hit for me, for sure. Cheek products, Essence, Catrice. Let's do Essence first, because they have fewer things to talk about. The Pure Nude Baked Blushes finally came to the EU. Only available online. I haven't seen these in store, but some websites stock them. I have mine in Berry Cheeks, and this is okay. <laughs> um, I like it, but I don't love it. There's just something about this that makes me go like, mm, like I was hoping that this would be similar to those like oil infused blushes that Catrice did. 
um, like texture wise, cause that's also baked. So I was expecting the same kind of pigmentation and blendability. And I just feel this is a little bit dry. It looks pretty on the cheeks and a little goes a long way. So I think it's a good formula, but this is how I feel with a lot of Essence blushes. I end up usually decluttering mine because they kind of like don't really live up to my expectations all the time. And I feel similarly about this one. I've now been able to find to try it, so I now know before I didn't, but yeah, this this was okay. I think if you like this kind of baked formula, you're gonna love it. But for me, I just feel I have other things in my collection that I like better. And then they did the Essence Water Tint um, Lip and Cheek Tint. So this is a Benefit Benetton dupe, very clearly. Mm. Um, and this again was released in the US before we got it, I think. Again, a product I've only seen online, not in store. It has a doe foot applicator, which I enjoy. Um, but what I don't enjoy is that this doesn't blend. It just doesn't. And it's very easily, like, it's it very easily goes into clown territory, which I don't love. It's too drying on the lips, so I didn't love it for that. It was okay on the cheeks, but I felt because it is liquidy, and I have other liquid blushes, but they have a slightly creamier formula. This is very watery. It's more like a lip stain, like a gay beauty lip stain than anything else. And I just feel that once it settles down and you try to blend it, blend over it, it doesn't really look that nice. So I felt this was a little bit patchy. It wasn't quite the look I wanted to go for. And I feel the Catrice stuff I tried was just much more successful. Case in point, this little guy, the Air Blush Glow. This wasn't a new formula to me. I had already tried one of the shades, but it was so incredibly similar to things I already owned. I was like, I don't need to keep it around. But then they did Berry Haze, and I've been really on a cool toned blush kick. And this is a cool tone berry, a cool tone berry mauve. That's how I would describe it. It is, it has that like vibrancy to it, but it's not too blue and it's not too Barbie pink, which is what I also enjoy. Very often, like if you have a cool tone blush, it's like a cool tone Barbie pink. Like that's the only thing brands seem to be able to do. And I like that this is a little bit different. It is in the really lovely Air Blush Glow formula that I already knew I liked. It has a little bit of a glow, but it's not too shimmery. It's very natural on the cheeks. And I really enjoyed wearing this. I wore this a lot when it was in my shop, my stash. I reached for this over my more expensive bronzer from Bare Minerals that was in the same selection. So that tells you something. And then more blush from Catrice, this Cheek Affair palette. This is currently in my shop, my stash. Um, when you're watching this video, yes, it has now been uh, reviewed as well. So this you can also read up on. I use both the highlighter and the blush that we get in here. It's in the shade Love at First Swipe. Um, it, I think it also came in like an orangey tone. Th this has a little bit more vibrancy to it. It reminds me a lot shade wise of the Essence Pure Nude one I just showed you. It is that borderline blue tone pink that I don't like. I just have this a million times over in my collection. The Air Blush Glow I feel looks a lot more natural. This is this formula is also a little bit thicker, especially this highlight. I felt looked a little heavy on my skin and you can really like see it sitting on my cheekbone and I don't love that. The blush is okay. I would still reach for that blush sometime, but I feel that out of the three like powder blushes I have here, the Essence, the Air Blush Glow from Catrice and this, the shades are pretty much identical. They don't have that much difference to offer. And then the Air Blush Glow is just my favorite of the three. So that's why this one, I like it okay, but I would prefer this single blush one. I have one uh, more powder product here, the Glow Lights Highlighter in Rosy Nude. And you can see I went to town on this thing when it was in my shop, my stash. I use this almost every single day. I had other, I think, did I have other highlighters in my shop, my stash that time round? I think just so I could really give it a whirl, I didn't select too many other things, but it, it's a good one. It's a good one. It looks really dark in the pan. It has like an orangey gold. 
and a pink running through it. Um, and I was just picking it up from the middle and it kind of looks like the pink is more there than that orange tone. I think the orange tone may actually just be an effect in the pan because it doesn't really seem to be going all the way through the powder, just so you know. So you're getting more of the pink and that's the thing I love. It looks like a rose gold, like deeper pink shade. It's not, it's quite light, but it has like, it really has the best of both worlds, which is why I think this can work on a lot of skin tones because it works on mine because it has that cooler tone flash. However, the base of it has a little bit more warmth, which is why I can think, I can really imagine this working on even much deeper skin tones than mine without it looking ashy because it is so dimensional and it has so many layers to it. So it can work on me, but it can also work on other things. It has a really lovely formula. Whenever you're using this, it doesn't feel like you're using a drugstore highlighter at all. It feels high end. And then I have some cream products and both of them are sort of like cream contour, bronzery highlight kind of thing. So first things first, the Melted Sun Cream Bronzer. Catrice has done it. They've come out with a good, a good cream bronzer. The only thing I was afraid of was that this was gonna be expensive or too dark for me. Expensive? too dark because this is 020 Beach Babe and there is no lighter shade. There's no 010. There's a 020 and a 030, but they don't do a 010. Maybe that's still coming. Who knows? Uh, Catrice has done these things in the past. Um, the only downside to this, even though I can make it work, it looks actually really nice on, is that this hits, hits hard pan. When I touch this, nothing comes off. For a cream, that doesn't happen. So you need to bear in mind that you first need to go in with your finger because it really responds to the warmth of your finger. Use that, put it on the back of your hand, use a brush and apply it, which is an extra step, but I feel formula wise, it's very similar to the Makeup Revolution Cream Bronzer that I loved, which I've heard people saying is a dupe for the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer, which I have, which I have yet to put in a shop my stash. So since this is so similar to the Makeup Revolution one, and that is deemed a dupe for the Makeup by Mario, do we have a U U European version of that? I th like, I'm U yeah, Makeup Revolution is UK, of course, but um, which is also Europe, but not European Union, so. Um, but yeah, this, this was lovely. It worked really well. I enjoyed having it in there. Just that extra step. And since this is so similar to the Makeup Revolution, which also comes in more shades, I have a tendency to say I like the Makeup Revolution one better than this. But if this is the only thing you can get your hands on and you want to try a cream bronzer at an affordable price point, try it. it I, don't think, I don't think you'd hate it. I think you might like, very much like it, provided the shade works for you. Because it, sheer, it shears out beautifully. I can get away with that 020 shade just fine. It doesn't look weird. Maybe in the dead of winter, it may be a little bit too dark. It may, because of course I tried it in this like post summer season when I have a little bit more color in my face, but yeah, it worked quite well. And then we have the Magic Shaper from Catrice, and this is their contour and glow stick. So we have a contour on the one side and a highlight on the other side. And this is currently in my shop, my stash. And I do not like this. I really did not like this. Oh, um, again, this needs a lot of warming up on the back of your hand for it to work. But this sets down so quickly that I feel by the time I've got it on a brush and I'm trying to apply it, it has already set. So that's why this one, mm, not really, not necessarily the best one ever. Um, I would not recommend you buy this. I would go, if you want a cream bronzer from Catrice or Essence, go with the Melted Sun. This, uh, I don't know. I also tried using it directly from the stick and I felt that especially the highlighter here again is a little bit too thick and heavy and a little cakey. Um, when I use it directly from the stick, it doesn't lift off my makeup that's underneath it, which is good. Like it doesn't like create patchiness or it doesn't wipe away my foundation, which is what I was afraid of. Um, but this just, it just looked a little muddy and it didn't really, like I don't like going in with like a stripe of product and trying to blend it out. 
I much rather like create a little bit more surface on the back of my hand and pick that up with a brush because I feel it creates a much more natural look. So this, this product just isn't really for me, I think. I mean, if you like this kind of thing, it can be cute and it works. And in a makeup bag, if you're traveling, you have your bronzer and your highlighter stick in one go, provided you warm it up on the back of your hand, it, it can work, but it wasn't my favorite. It just wasn't my favorite. Eyes then are next. And first we're doing like the little things and then we'll do the palettes because I know everybody wants to know, but you've already heard me talk about the palettes before. So we're gonna race through it. I have two of the Essence multi-chrome flakes and I wrote the review for these the other day. Um, and th this this is nice. It's it's It works really well. You do have to bear in mind that these are toppers, so they need a base layer underneath it and then you can top them over. The only concern I have here is how eye safe these things are. <laughs> because especially this blue one is very, very chunky. Like they look like shards of glass <sighs> and they do feel very like, fl like flexible, flexible particles. And I didn't have any issues taking it off. So that's a good thing. But I think if you're a contact lens wet rare, this, this may not be a good thing. The pinky toned one is far less chunky. It has a much more finer milled sparkle to it, but shade wise, that isn't my favorite. With this one, it was a little bit difficult to like lay it down evenly because it is so chunky as well. However, these didn't lead to like increased creasing or anything like that. Like I wore this one when I went to a dance party and it was like 30 degree weather, like really, really hot, stuffy, sweaty, bleh that kind of weather and it stayed put really, really well on top of my eyeshadow. So it worked really well. The blue one as well. I've used both of them once or twice. If you're looking for this kind of thing and you want something more creative, then I think it can really work. I also think that these can be fun if you like for a party or something, you want to like tap it on your face or on your body somewhere. I think they are really cool for that. But other than that, I don't really see a lot of use for it. It's it's quite a jelly texture. So do with that what you wish. But yeah, this is perhaps like for the eye area, maybe like around your face, like that you apply it in the highlight area for a party, that could be fun. Um, might wanna do that for an upcoming party that I have going up. But other than that, I don't really need that. Essence, more Essence here. They're all Essence products. Um, they released a bunch of these eyeliners and these are okay. Um, these dip eyeliners, I'm just not a huge fan of. I prefer their regular standard eyeliner. Like this is just always, like just the brush tip is just a touch too thick. I have Huda Deep Set Eyes, so winged liner is not my forte. Um, I use the super fine eyeliner mostly, which is like this really long thing because I feel I can just like use it to like stamp on the wing and then draw it in. However, and this is what I have had in the past with Essence eyeliner pens, they dry out really quickly. You do one eye and it's fine and you move on to the other one and you have to let it sit like this for another five minutes. So I don't love them for that reason. That's why from Essence, I like their classic liquid liners. Those I like. And from uh, a brand like Kiko, I would go for their like felt tip eyeliners because those work a little bit better. Um, and then last but not least, I have the Essence Lash Without Limits. This is the brown one because this one is open. I also bought the black and I'm really enjoying this mascara. If you uh, stay tuned for my upcoming uh, eyeshadow palette review video that should go live in the next week or so, um, you will see that, that I created quite a lot of looks where I'm wearing this brown mascara and it works really, really well. I like the brush on this. It's like a plastic, quite flexible brush, which I mostly they're very stiff and you can really brush them through. Um, but I've also had to test this on its own because very often I top my mascaras with a waterproof mascara on top to ensure that it lasts when it's raining. But I have been able to wear this all day, even on my lower lashless lashes without smudging, and it works really well. Um, and this is extreme len lengthening and volume. So it's the best of both worlds, and it definitely delivers. I'm really liking it. I like the formula, and the brown shade has been a huge hit for me. So 
I might actually be repurchasing this in the brown very, very soon because with Essence mascaras, they tend to last like about a month or two before they expire. So that's why I probably need a new one of this before the end of the year. We're moving on to palettes and I completely forgot, but Essence did this cheek palette as well. So I'll discuss this first. This is Bloom Baby Bloom Eye and Face Palette. They also chucked some eyeshadows in here. And I tried it in the first impression, but these like all in one palette just aren't for me. Um, so the bronzer was a little bit too warm. The blush is okay. The highlight was a little bit too deep. Um, and I mentioned in my video how I feel these eyeshadow shades are very close to what we get in the cheek shades. So I, I didn't need them in here. Like this highlighter is simply just a lighter version of this highlighter. Like, why do I need both? Um, you could potentially pull these cheek products into the eye look if you feel these four shades are too limiting. So if you were to buy this, you could perhaps use the entire palette more so as eyeshadow than a cheek and eye palette. I think it works better that way. Um, but yeah, these eyeshadows, I, they just weren't anything to write home about. It's okay. I think like this is where you can really find where like, like that Essence's target audience is a slightly younger audience. You can really tell with the products that they do like this, because I think that if you're like 15, 16 and you just want to start with makeup and you want something fun that can like get the job done, this can work, but like it's weirdly chunky and I try so many of these things and the only reason why I bought it this time around was because Essence didn't have a new highlighter or bronzer. So that's why I bought it. So I could use it in the first impression. So you can see it in there, but this is not something I'm gonna be reviewing. And then the other palettes I have here were all things I tried for you in October. So I'll make sure to link you to my eyeshadow palette review that I did then because all of these were there. I did looks with every single shade in these palettes. So you can see that, let me do Catrice first, cause they had fewest things. Catrice came out with two things, the Wow in a Box in Peach Perfect and the Cozy Earth eyeshadow palette. The Cozy Earth is all right. I tried all four of the palettes that already existed in this line last year. Again, I can link that in, in the description box down below. And this palette is very in line with what those palettes had to offer. My main problem and why I decluttered the other four is what you can also see hap happening in this palette. I've only used this a handful of times and you can already st see the patches in these eyeshadows from where I've been sticking my brush and my fingers into it. I don't know why it's, it, it probably doesn't really mean anything about the quality of this shadow. It works just fine, but I just feel that because of this really dark patch, that that is just hard pan waiting to happen. Is it just me? Because yeah, that's just kind of the way I feel. So these powders tend to turn color really quickly. It is pretty, but for like what this has to offer, I want it more green. It's essentially six warm tone neutrals with two greens, which is why this won't be my favorite. Um, the wow in a box quite, quite surprised me because this is very peach heavy. And I was like, oh, peach is not my shade. But I ended up liking this a lot more than I had expected. And I was really getting Natasha Denona mini Zendo vibes with this one. It's not a mini Zendo dupe, but it does have a similar sort of aesthetic to it. The only shade in here I don't love is this one. So for me, these four are great. This peach was really pretty as a crease shade. It has a really nice dark brown shimmer to deepen things up, to use as a liner. You have this really pretty gold with a bit of a pinky peach shift that is lovely as an inner corner highlight. And then this is the star of the show. And this is why it has mini Zendo vibes because I feel we get a shade like this in the mini Zendo, which is like gold, pink, peach sort of duochrome that is beautiful when you lay it all over the lid. Um, it layers really well over this gold though. So this I usually put like, I put it mainly on the lower lash line, but it's also really stunning if you put this all over the lid and then popping this one all over it. So this was the more successful of the two from Catrice for me, but. I know I was gonna like this already because I've tried all of the five in a box we got before. Now the line seems to be called wow in a box. 
And then from Essence, we got two new of these like baby palettes. They did a couple of these already last year. Uh, the Trust Your Intu Intuition and Protect Your Energy. Um, the Trust Your Intuition is very similar to the Cozy Earth, where we have some warm tone neutrals with some pops of green. I feel these two shimmers are too similar and this is far too orange for my liking. Um, but these again work pretty decently for what they are going to do. Great for travel if that's you. If you want something very small and handy, this can work. Uh, the Protect Your Energy is a more warm toned one, very orange toned heavy. Um, again, a similar vibe to the green toned one. Like it enough, but these weren't my favorites. The things I liked best were the cool nude edition and the welcome to Cape Town. Now this was apparently not new this round, but I completely missed it in one of my other overviews and it seems to be disappearing. It's getting very difficult to find it, even though if I go onto the Essence website, they say it should be available. <laughs> What's going on here? They do three others in this lineup, but the bronze edition, again, similar story to this one, cannot be found. According to the Essence website, it should still be available. I don't know. So the only ones I could still read it, like still get my hands on are the rose and the nude. And those are the two I'm just, I'm just not really into it. So I was playing with the idea of doing a video like I did with the Catrice ones where I do like an overview of four palettes. But if I can't find them and if you can find them anymore, then I'm not sure. Uh, it could very well be that they're now being phased out so that when we get the new Essence products in like January, February time, that we get new eyeshadow palettes. That that could be why they are disappearing. But yeah, this one I loved. This is so good. Notino has them. On Notino, you can still find this. So if you're in the EU, you're able to find this for sure. Um, it's really lovely. It looked very gray toned heavy when I got it home, which is probably why I decided to not pick it up initially. Could be why, because it looks very gray but this is more of a taupe. The silver has enough of a depth that it's not too bright. These pulled more pink on me than berry, which was unexpected. This is the only true gray tone in the entire palette. We get some really nice light shades to blend things out. It's just such a good, really pretty palette. I did two different looks with this and it was a great success. Another great success, the Welcome to Cape Town. This is so beautiful. And I have tried a lot of these travel palettes that I was able to get my hands on and I didn't like any of them. Not because of the quality, but color story wise, it wasn't quite it. I tried the, the Marrakesh, the Rome, I've tried the Miami, like I've tried a couple of these and they were okay formula wise. They blended quite nicely, they came together, but the Miami was supposed to be this like bright palette with lots of like fun colors, but that turned out to be mainly like a neutral palette with like a pop of blue, which we have, we've seen that a million times over. So color story wise, they were always a bit of a letdown till this one happened. We get teals, we get cool tone neutrals, we get warm tone neutrals and we get greens. Fall in a color story, you guys. It is so, so good. This, I don't love yellow tone golds, but this, the formula on that shade is out of this world amazing. This teal is a bit difficult to blend, but together these, like this darker matte, this shade is stunning. I still wanna do a look with like these like grayish tones and like the taupey things. So stunning, so, so stunning. The greens are amazing. You can do so much with this, so, so much. You could go warm toned with the pop of brown and like keep it very neutral, just using that peachy shade, using that a little bit of that orange and the brown for a super neutral look. If you wanna glam it up, you throw that gold in there. You can go cool tone neutral, you can go green. I mix the cool tones with the teals because that's my favorite thing. I love clashing taupes with teals. It's one of my favorite looks to do. So that's what I definitely ended up doing here as well. The greens go really well with the warm tones. The orange goes with the teals as well. Don't forget blues and oranges are really good if you clash them. So a very small, very affordable palette, but with a million different options in a really nice formula especially for the price point.
And then we just have some lip products left. So let me get organized. So we got mainly glosses, lip oils, lip balms, those kind of things. So Catrice does one of these, I think, every single time. This time it's called the Glitter Glam Glow Lip Balm. It comes in this sparkly packaging and it also has sparkles on the actual lip balm. This is one of those like pH reacting, um, like turns your lips a little bit pink kind of lip balms. These are nice. I've used a couple of these in the past. The formulations, like the actual like balmy quality never changes. They just put different scents in and make it look glittery like they did with this one. It doesn't really add much to the line, but they have one of those every time. And then I bought their lip jams, which apparently are really popular. I wasn't sure. They do a honey one and they do a strawberry one. And these are the really thick sort of balms. These I think are great to be applied at the start of a makeup routine and then take it off before you put on your lips, uh, lipstick. So that's what I have these for because I currently have another lip balm in my makeup collection already that I use in my, as part of my shop, my stash to hydrate my lips before putting on any sort of lipstick. But yeah, these are going to be the replacements for that. And they have a very strong scent. If you don't like scented stuff, you're not gonna like it. However, what do I do with my lip balm? before I put on lipstick, I wipe it off. So I put it on, let it sink in, and then I wipe off the excess and then I apply my lipstick. And it just ensures that your lipstick lasts a lot longer. From Essence, um, the only thing I tried from them were their lip oils and I didn't like these. Um, I think I have these two. I think they're supposed to be like a brighter pink one as well, but um, I, I wasn't a fan, like, Scent wise, they have this very sort of florally, florally kind of scent to it. And at least this one does. Let me see what this one smells like. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't smell good. And these felt really thick and gloopy on the lips. These weren't my favorite. Catrice ones are much better. So speaking of Catrice, their Glossing Glow lip oils far better. These also leave a tint, especially the red toned one and this brighter pink toned one. I have the Dior one that looks like this and I have a house Labs one that looks like this. Identical. Identical. I have been reaching more for these than my house Labs and my Dior. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I love these to pieces. They are currently really hard to find because these sold out really quickly after launch. I hope they bring them back because I definitely want to get some backups of these. Oh, and by the way, I did a lip swatch video with this and all of the shades from the Marbalicious Liquid Lip Balm. So I'll make sure to link that video down below in case you want to see what these look like on the lips and if you want to see more swatches. Um, so this is in the shade Don't Slurp So Loud. This is the only shade I decided to keep around because it's the mauve toned one. And I have mentioned this in another video before. I feel formula wise that this is very similar to the Better Than Fake Lips Volume Gloss, which is one of my favorite lip gloss formulas that Catrice has ever done. Um, so that's why I did keep just one around because I don't need to keep all of the shades. Um, the only thing they change is that they made it marble, which the more you stick the applicator in, it's just gonna disappear because it's gonna be like after a while, this is just gonna no longer going to look marbled, but hey, it looks cute. It feels great on the lips. Scent wise, yeah, these have a slightly sweet scent, but I don't mind it because it's not very strong, not like those lip jams. And these ones, yeah, these are very fruity. These have a fruity scent, so. You do have to bear that in mind, but I feel that these scents like disappear quite quickly. So it doesn't linger when it's like right along below my nose. I never like that. And finally, something that I didn't like from Catrice, I tried these on in my um, first impression video, the Max It Up Glowy Plumper Lip Booster Extreme. I didn't find them very plumping. I didn't like the shades on me. This didn't do very much for me. If you want anything from the new Catrice collection, I would say go for the lip oils. So there you have it, that's the full lowdown. These were all of the Essence and Catrice products that I tried for you in the past two to three months. So I hope this roundup was helpful, that you got something out of it, that you now know what you should and shouldn't buy. We'll be getting some more new Essence and Catrice products very, very soon. I think February, March time. That's usually, that's been there. 
uh, game so far. It's like roughly every single six months. However, I've seen Catrice launch new products as early as January and it's usually first Catrice and then Essence. So you can look forward to some more um, uh, videos with some new Essence and Catrice when those lines drop. And we're just gonna keep on trucking with these Essence and Catrice releases because I really enjoy doing them and I know you enjoy watching them. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch one of my videos. I greatly appreciate you being here. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos every single week, so if you'd like to stay tuned and then I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.